Before the sun could even come up, the Battle of Liberty Place Monument was already coming down. A single pair of Mardi Gras beads can contain toxic chemical elements like lead, cadmium, chlorine, bromine, arsenic, and even mercury. Now we saw the backlash in Indiana and Arkansas, but Governor Bobby Jindal is sticking to his guns. And a simple assignment for a Tulane University Spanish class has turned into a scandal for the Green Wave. They've raised almost $25,000 for the kids at Children's Hospital. Thousands of pounds of Mardi Gras beads left in the street, unworn, unused, and many broken. And while it may look like a mess that'll just get cleaned up, experts say it's really taking a toll on the environment. They're getting into storm drains and then of course that is making its way down into the lake and then out into the Gulf of Mexico and eventually onto our oceans. Not only um, can fish and other marine life ingest those beads, but then they can also, um, some of the chemicals can start leaching into the waterways. According to ecocenter.org, a single pair of Mardi Gras beads can contain toxic chemical elements like lead, cadmium, chlorine, bromine, arsenic, and even mercury. So, the Audubon Institute is making it easier for you to safely recycle your beads. Just bring them to the aquarium, zoo, or insectarium. All those beads go to the Ark. We're, we're saying we're, we're saving New Orleans one bead at a time. Last year, Ark collected nearly 86,000 pounds of beads, but more than triple that number is just sitting in a landfill somewhere. 20 million pounds of beads get imported every year, and we've done we do less than 200,000 pounds in a year. So where does the rest of that 19 million plus go? So next year, whether you're catching them or throwing them, keep in mind the powerful impact that Mardi Gras beads have on the planet. It's better to throw smarter, you know, because you'll, you'll throw less and you'll, you know, you'll help sustain a little bit more of the, of, you know, of the planet. That's right, Gina. We saw the backlash in Indiana and Arkansas, but Governor Bobby Jindal is sticking to his guns. He's issued an executive order for a religious freedom bill. Now, the bill died in the legislature, and that's where some lawmakers and others say it should have been buried. Senator Karen Carter Peterson fired back at the governor's action and inactions during a Senate meeting in Baton Rouge, claiming that Jindal is not looking out for the people's interest. When is enough going to be enough around here? When is he going to roll up his sleeves and come to work and do the people's business that he asked to do? We didn't beg him to run for governor. He asked to run for governor. The measure essentially creates protections for private businesses whose owners and employees oppose non-traditional marriage. Some say it allows for discrimination. Jindal says it protects Christians from discrimination and only guarantees constitutional rights. First Amendment to the Constitution says that Louisianians, Americans, have the right to live according to their religious beliefs 24 hours a day, seven days a week without discrimination. While the governor remains committed to his decision, some people think the outcome will have a drastic effect on tourism, a vital component of the state's economy. This state depends on billions of dollars from the tourist industry, which includes conventions and the leisure traveler, and we don't need this type of issue distracting or deterring potential visitors and conventioneers from coming here. And the tourism industry is already taking jabs. Two New York state lawmakers have asked their governor, Andrew Cuomo, to ban all non-essential state-funded travel to Louisiana. In the letter, New York State Assemblyman Daniel O'Donnell says, we sent a letter to Indiana and Arkansas, we'll do the same to Louisiana. Gina? At least a dozen cars were snapped by this mobile traffic unit on Elysian Fields Avenue. This is just one of the city's 10 new mobile traffic cameras meant to improve public safety around school zones. But some drivers who receive tickets from the cameras are saying that they felt blindsided. Because like there was hardly any signs indicating what the speed limit was to like after, like I want to say about almost 10 miles after like the little traffic car. The city may have violated a state law that requires all red light cameras to have a sign clearly posted to give drivers fair warning. More outcry came from people who noticed the car wasn't registered in Louisiana and had no vehicle inspection sticker. Attorney Mark Hill has fought against cameras used for ticketing drivers, saying the city is breaking a federal law. But what the city is doing is they're making you pay. $50 for you to have the ability to cross-examine and confront that NOPD officer, your accuser. So they're, they're violating your due process right there. Well, having the red light cameras is not in and of itself illegal. It's the way that the city is administering the red light tickets and collecting the revenue 
that is illegal. I reached out to the city for its response to the public's reaction about the cameras and the claims that they're operating illegally, but they sent no response by the time that this report aired. I'm Raymond Price with Loyola Student News. Six hours of dancing led up to this moment, the big reveal of the 2017 Loyola Dance Marathon. These kids put on their boogie shoes and their original goal was $10,000, but after the night, they've raised almost $25,000 for the kids at Children's Hospital so they can get the best care and treatment in the world. The excitement didn't end at the last song. Donations were coming in past the final countdown and the growing numbers kept everybody on their toes. So we do the number reveal at midnight and it was crazy enough that we got um, we had made the poster to show everyone at like 11.45 and then got a $50 donation. So we just like scrambled together, started sharpening a brand new poster. Every single dollar is a miracle for families who depend on Children's Hospital. So for us, it, it, it's the difference between life and death. Children's is a nonprofit, so without donations from fundraisers like Dance Marathon, the hospital wouldn't have been able to give Kelly's daughter, Sophia, all the life-saving treatments she needs. To be able to give the technology to the doctors to perform, you know, surgery and save her life um, repeatedly is just incredible. This year, Loyola raised twenty-one thousand dollars more than last year, and they're hoping to keep raising that bar in the future. I think it's just exciting to finally see it all come together and finally raise it all. But I think that next year should be even bigger, and then the next year bigger and bigger and bigger. Raymond Price, Loyola News Service. As you all know, Election Day is just four days away. And if you're from out of state and you have an absentee ballot that you need to be sent in, you can come on here to the One Loyola Room. We have a notary, and she'll get your absentee ballots notarized so you can send them in back home and have your vote counted. She's been here since about 12 o'clock. She'll be here for about one more hour. So you only have a short window of time to come down and get your information sent in. Bring your student ID with you and your state ID, and the process goes from there. Also... You can come and get some info about each presidential candidate so you can make a more informed decision when you go into the polls on Tuesday. For the Loyola Maroon, I'm Raymond Price. Back to you. Hello, I'm Raymond Price, and this is the Maroon Minute for September 26th. Tonight, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump will meet face-to-face -face in the first presidential debate of the election season and is expected to be the most widely watched debate since Jimmy Carter and Ronald Reagan faced off in 1980. You can watch it tonight in Miller Hall, room 114 at 7 p.m. The Loyola Society for Civic Engagement is hosting the watch party with the Loyola College Democrats and Republicans. There will be free food and a discussion both before and after the debate. NBC's Lester Holt will moderate the debate, and tonight's main topics include securing America, America's direction, and achieving prosperity. And racial tension escalated over the weekend at the University of Missouri. At least 30 black football players announced that they would not play another game until the school's president was removed. This comes after heavy criticism of late responses to race-related events on the campus. Many student groups at the school claim their president, Tim Wolf, was negligent in handling the treatment of minority students. The university's board will meet later today to discuss the matter and find a potential solution. And it was a rough weekend for some of the state's biggest sports teams. They just couldn't pull through and win. Friday, Tulane lost their homecoming game to the Connecticut Huskies, and the Pelicans suffered back-to-back -back defeats by the Atlanta Hawks and the Dallas Mavericks. And the Saints ended their winning streak yesterday when they lost to the Tennessee Titans. Disappointing, but not enough to put a damper on the rest of the week. That's all for today. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for more news. Thanks for watching and have a great day.